I'm gonna walk you through how to get started with Superbase on Android in this video. Hi there Android developers! I'll be using this Jetpack Compose note-taking app today to demonstrate how you can add Superbase to your Android project so that you'll have a database to persist your users' data. Let's dive in! We are going to create a new Android project. We can call our application Notes app. And once the project is set up, we can get started. Let's head over to the official Kotlin client library docs. And before we dive in, I'd like to give a shout out to Jan Tennert, who's the maintainer of the Kotlin SDK for Superbase. Now let's scroll down to installation guide. And here we can find how to install Superbase SDK in our Android application. We can use this build.gradle.kts configuration. Just copy this over. Open up our app level build.gradle.kts file. and paste it right in there under dependencies. For this example app, we are not going to use real time, so we can delete that. We also need to specify the version number. We can find the latest version number in the docs, and I'm going to use the version two. There's another dependency that we need to install, and that is the Ktor client. We can copy this piece of code over and paste it right in there. Now for engine, we can just say Android. And then the version number, we can head over to the Ktor website and find the latest available version there. And lastly, we need to enable serialization in our project. On the serialization section of our docs, we can find the plugin that we need to install in order to enable serialization. Paste it into our plugin section and we can specify the Kotlin version. I'm using Kotlin 1.9.0. The final step is to enable internet access. We can head over to the official Android developer's website and copy this piece of code. Paste it into our manifest file. And we are good to go. Let's sync the project with the Gradle files. And while it's doing that, we can find a code to initialize Superbase in our project. Be the sample code. And for simplicity, we are just going to paste it into our main activity file. Hit import a few times. For this example app, we are not going to use the GoTo plugin since GoTo is for authentication. We are not going to implement authentication just yet today. Now in order to complete the initialization step, we need to get the Superbase credentials. So let's make a brand new Superbase project. You can create one for free by heading to database.new. We can call the project notes. We can generate a secure password. And for the region, you can just select wherever you're closest to. For me, that'll be Tokyo. Let's hit create new project. And once the project is set up, we can find our credentials under settings and API. And we can find the Superbase URL. Let's just copy and paste it here. And Superbase anonymous key. Both of these credentials are meant to be exposed to the client, so there's no security concern whatsoever for hard coding these values. Let's also create a Superbase table for our application. Head back to the Superbase dashboard and open the table editor. Here we can click new table. We can create a table called notes. We can untick this checkbox that says enable rollable security. You should never untick it on a production app, but today we just want to get something up and running. We can delete this created add column and add a new column named body. Data type will be text and we can make it non-nullable. Let's hit save to create this table. Once we got the table, let's also create a dummy data. Now let's try to query this dummy data from our application. We can delete this initial boilerplate and create a new composable function. We can call it notes list and update the wizard up here. Let's define the data class for our notes table. Add the serializable annotation to our notes data class. And we have the ID column and the body column. Head back down to the notes list and define the states. You probably don't want to hold the states in your composable function in a production app, 
but again, we just want to get something up and quick. We can then call the launch effect to fetch the data from SuperBase initially when this composable function is called. We can use the width context and pass it dispatches.io to make the network call outside of the main thread. Have a results variable and call superbase.from passing the nodes table and dot select because we want to select the data. And we can decode them as list of nodes. Once we have the list of nodes, we can add it to our local state. Import remember. And now that we have the data in our states, let's create some UI to display those data. Create a lazy column, give it items of notes. And for each note, we can return a list item. This list item will simply display the body of the note. We can delete these prefixes here. And we are ready to display the data fetched from Superbase. Let's try to run it. And yes, we have successfully loaded the data from our Superbase database. Now let's try to create a UI to write some data in our Superbase database. Wrap the lazy column with a column widget. And let's have a text form field below it. We can create a row to have outline text field in a button. To hold a text field value, we can just create another state up here. On value change, we can just assign it to new node variable. And we just need to import a few things here. Now on to the button. The idea is that upon pressing this button, we'll send the data to our Superbase database. In order to make API calls within the onclick callback, we need to obtain a remember coroutine scope instance. We can then access its launch method, passing dispatches.io. Inside the coroutine, we can call superbase.from, again passing the notes table, and then call insert. In the insert function, we can define the data that we want to insert in our superbase database. In this case, we can just create a map with key of body and value of new note. Upon inserting the data in our superbase database, we want to fetch the data that we successfully inserted. To do that, we can chain select. And also, we can chain single since we know that we only are inserting a single row. Now after getting back the data, we can just add it to our local state. And lastly, let's refresh the value on the text form field. And that is it. Let's see if we can successfully write our data and then display the new data on our application. We see the new UI. We can type something up, hit save, and ta-da, we do see the new data updated in our app. We can also verify it on our Superbase dashboard. At this point, we have all the features, so let's fix up the styles a bit. We want the row to take up the maximum width and give it some padding. We also want to vertically center the elements within the row. We can give the text field some way to take up the remaining space of the row. We can also add some animations to the list tile. Let's run the application. We could also give the lazy column a way to take up the remaining vertical space. Nicely done. We have the text field at the very bottom. 
As the software keyboard appear, the notes that we had disappears from the screen. We can fix this by opening our manifest file and set the window soft input mode to adjust resize. Let's stop the application, sync Gradle files, and run the application one last time. And voila, we don't have the issue that we had with the text disappearing anymore. And that's how you can get started with Superbase on Android. For this video, I skipped over anything security related because I just wanted to get something up and running. But if you want to learn more about how you can secure your Superbase database, you should check out this video right here. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to see more content about Android and Superbase. I'll see you around. Bye!